Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's online worship service for this Sunday, August 16th, 2020. Uh, I am your lay reader, Zach Cosner. I invite you to go ahead and uh, download and print the bulletin for today's service. The link to that bulletin can be found underneath, the, underneath this video in the description uh, on YouTube and on Facebook, or you can head to our website, www.centralprespb.com, click the publications link at the top of the page, uh, scroll down to you see today's date, and uh, go ahead and print that out. Uh, we do have some updates uh, to the prayer list and to the announcements uh, on the um, bulletin. Uh, speaking of those updated announcements, let's go ahead and turn our attention now to the announcements found on the last page of your bulletin. Uh, we send congratulations to Jamie Varnell and Dylan Wolf, who welcomed James Don Wolf into the world on Thursday afternoon at 3.26 p.m. He was 8 pounds and 2.5 ounces and 49 centimeters long. Mom and baby are doing well and made it home uh, yesterday uh, afternoon. Uh, Dominic Munn has placed a blessings box at the fire department in Grady. Uh, if you are interested in donating non-perishable food items to or books, please contact Jessica Munn or the church via social media. Archives of our online services can be found on Facebook and on YouTube. Links to each are on our website. Speaking of our website, online giving is now available. Uh, look for the Donate Now link at the top right-hand corner of the webpage. Uh, we take debit cards, credit cards, and checks, and you can also set up recurring donations on a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly basis. <clears throat> Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Christ died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from, from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them, and, entrust and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Let us admit our sins before God, first using the prayer printed in the bulletin, and then silently. Merciful God, in your gracious presence we confess our sin and the sins of this world. Although Christ is among us as our peace, we are a people divided against ourselves as we cling to the values of a broken world. The profit and pleasures we pursue lay waste the land and pollute the seas. The fears and the jealousies that we harbor set neighbor against neighbor and nation against nation. We abuse your good gifts of imagination and freedom, of intellect and reason, and have turned them into bonds of oppression. Lord, have mercy upon us. Heal and forgive us. Set us free to serve you in the world as agents of your reconciling love in Jesus Christ. Amen. And now silently. Amen. As people born of the water and the spirit, we have died to the old life and the new life has begun. God's grace is poured out upon us day by day. Come to the water and remember your baptism. Be thankful and live as one who has been raised to new life. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Now for, the, uh, for the, those who are young and young at heart, I pre present Miss Rose Von Tunglin with today's children's message. 
Good morning, boys and girls. How, are, how is everyone today? You're probably wondering why I'm wearing this mask. Well, as most of you know, there's a virus going around called Corona. And there's lots of things that have been shut down, things that are going to happen in the future that we don't know about, but, and most of you are going to be starting school soon. So one of the ways you can protect yourself from this virus is by wearing a mask when you're out and about, especially when you're around other people. Uh, wash your hands with soap and water, and use hand sanitizer, and social distancing, which is what we've all been doing here lately. But there's also something else that we need to watch out for and protect ourselves from, and that is sin. You see, sin is one of those things that can just sneak up on you real quick. It's almost like someone teasing you sometimes about things. But we can protect ourselves from sin by praying, reading the Bible, watching the online services right now since we can't have service in our own church, and by taking care and watching over our other church members by sending them cards or giving them a call or just praying for them. So just like this coronavirus that's going around, we also need to protect ourselves against sin. So remember to do the things that we need to do to help others and to be good stewards. Let us pray. Dear Lord, today we ask that you will be with those who have the coronavirus. We ask that you will help us to stay away from it, to be able to protect ourselves from it. But most importantly, dear Lord, help us to protect ourselves from sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Miss Rose, for that great children's sermon. Um, we will continue to ask Miss Rose to uh, provide us with children's sermons as she is able. Um, now we'll go ahead and turn our attention to Reverend Tim Reeves with this week's sermon, Extending Our Reach. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Our first reading this morning comes from the 45th chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning with verse 1 and proceeding through verse 15. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. <clears throat> Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. And he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in this land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord over all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, well, and, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there since there are five more years of famine to come so that you and your household, all that you have, will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. 
Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Our second reading comes from the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew, beginning with the 10th verse and proceeding through verse 28. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. Then he called the crowds to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind, and if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, so that as your word is proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear, that hearing we might believe, and that believing we might live lives of richer and fuller service, glorifying you on earth as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. I could not escape those words of the psalmist this past week because they both inspired and haunted me as I considered this morning's readings. This is the great hope so many of us share the hope of God's peaceable kingdom. This is the grand and glorious vision given voice by the prophet Isaiah, who looked forward to that day when the nations shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, and neither shall they learn war anymore. But kindred do not always live together in unity within our friendships, our families, and even ourselves, discord and distrust lurk just below the surface. Anger has a way of rearing its ugly head, and all of us have likely hurt or been hurt by others. 
though it is tempting to think that as Christians we are above such pettiness, but deep down we all know better, don't we? One of the first great Christian controversies, in fact, centered on whether Gentiles would be required to become Jews before they could join the church. Paul argued that Gentile men did not need to be circumcised in order to be baptized, and he also argued that they should not be required to abide by Jewish dietary restrictions. Others within the church felt differently, very differently. Heated and angry words were exchanged, and the issue was settled at the Council of Jerusalem, where the church or the church agreed that Gentiles could become Christians without first becoming Jews. But the issue, unfortunately, did not end there, as many of Paul's letters will attest to. Other disputes and controversies have arisen over the 2,000 years of the church's existence. And even though we profess faith in the same Lord and Savior, the sad fact remains that many in the church of Jesus Christ, far from living together in unity, wouldn't go near one another, certainly wouldn't touch each other with a 10-foot pole. But fortunately, or maybe unfortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, God is always about the business of extending our reach. Someone once observed that God gives us an 11-foot pole so that we can deal with all those folk we wouldn't go near with a 10-foot pole. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It turns out that this isn't just a good idea, it's God's will for us. Which brings us to our readings this morning. Consider, consider first the story of Joseph revealing his identity to his brothers. Much has happened to Joseph since we last encountered him in Scripture. Joseph, Jacob's favorite son, had been sold into slavery by his brothers. He had languished in prison after not yielding to the seductive advances of Potiphar's wife. He had since earned Pharaoh's favor with his ability to interpret Pharaoh's dreams and had been granted the status of Pharaoh's right-hand man to oversee seven years of plenty and the seven years of famine that would follow. And most traditional interpretations of this passage focus on Joseph's ability and willingness to forgive. But I think such interpretations are fraught with pitfalls which lead to shame and despair and self-loathing. Because what happens when we, out of our own brokenness and hurt, find it impossible to do the same thing? What happens to us when we just cannot reach that far to bridge such a great divide. Well, I believe that a closer look at this passage reveals that the real emphasis in this account is not on Joseph, but on God's amazing ability to extend our reach even when we can't or won't on our own. Look again at the history of Joseph. As second in command of Egypt, surely if this were merely a story about Joseph, then he could have dispatched messengers at any time to his brothers and his father that he was safe and sound and doing well. But he didn't. We know that Jacob mourned for his son to the point of being inconsolable. And yet Joseph never once attempted to send word to his father saying that he was alive and well. Why? It's possible that the answer lies in the fact that Joseph has become too wrapped up in his own success to think about what had once meant the world to him. We read in the 41st chapter of Genesis that Joseph and his Egyptian wife had two sons. The first one they named Manasseh, which means making to forget. And Joseph says, 
God has made me forget all my hardships and all my father's house. Their second son was named Ephraim, which means fruitful. And Joseph says at his birth, God has made me fruitful in the land of my misfortunes. So I think you can make a pretty good case that Joseph may have simply just written his family off given his present good fortune. For all we know, Joseph may have very well resolved never to go near his family with a 10-foot pole. But God's amazing and abiding love and grace extended his reach. And the same occurs in our reading from Matthew. Now, we should note at the very beginning, this is a difficult text for some of us. The first part is easy enough to understand. Jesus disputes the Pharisaic notion that it's what goes into a body that defiles rather than what comes out. And then, as if to hammer home his point, Jesus leaves Israel and enters the Gentile territory of, of Tyre and Sidon, but it's what happens next which troubles so many of us. Because while there, Jesus is confronted by a woman who begs for mercy for her daughter, who is tormented by a demon, and Jesus is anything but receptive. First, he says nothing, virtually ignoring this woman and her daughter's plight. Then he points out that he was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then he compares this woman to a dog, a highly derogatory insult in Jesus' day. And that's what scandalizes so many people about this passage. Both Matthew and Mark tell this story. But there is one detail that is glaringly different. Mark describes this woman as being of Syrophoenician origin. Matthew calls her a Canaanite woman. Think back to the Old Testament about the Canaanites. These were the people who originally occupied the Promised Land before the Israelites arrived. These were the ones whom God commanded the Israelites to wipe off the face of the earth lest they adopt the Canaanites' idolatrous practices and stray from faithful obedience to God. They didn't wipe off all the, or wipe out all of the Canaanites. They did time and time again adopt their idolatrous religions. But something that is often forgotten or conveniently overlooked is the fact that according to the Bible itself, the Canaanites and the Israelites were distant cousins. They both traced their lineage through Noah. The Israelites were descendants of Noah's son, Shem. The Canaanites were descendants of Noah's son, Ham. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. And we who profess that all humans are created in the image of God share a common kinship with one another. Yet we still hurt and abuse one another. We harbor jealousies and prejudices. We are capable of great acts of cruelty whenever we in word or deed dehumanize one another. But what is striking about this woman's response is that she takes Jesus's insult and turns it back on him and points to a grander truth. If the dogs are there eating the crumbs from the table, then they must be, by extension, in the master's house to begin with. And if the master has seen fit not to exclude them, then why should anyone else? Think about that. God graciously extends God's love and mercy to everyone, 
and calls us to do the same. But perhaps the best news of all is that when we just can't reach that far, God intervenes to extend our reach so that such love and mercy are always possible. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now at this time that you please join me and confirm what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us, uh, let us now return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and offerings, which once again will be taking, taken electronically by using the Donate Now link at the top of our webpage um, at www.centralprespb.com, or you can mail your tithe into the church at 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves to you, for you to use as you see fit. Until that most glorious day when, at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend, and every tongue shall confess him, Lord, to your honor and glory. Amen. At this time, let us share our joys and concerns, which there are many. Um, first things first, uh, I, 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 it is my duty to pass along the sad news that uh, Central member Mary Kentz uh, passed away this past week. Um, she was living in Fort Smith with her son, and um, the service will be offici officiated by um, uh, John Landis of First Church here in Pine Bluff at Memorial Park Cemetery. Uh, it will occur on Monday. Um, the, um, for more information about uh, the service, uh, Ralph Robinson is taking care of the arrangements for them, so you can visit their website for more information about the arrangements. Um, or you can message me and I will pass it along on social media. Um, we also need to hold the family of Ann Hollingsworth, friend of the church, in our prayers. Uh, Miss Hollingsworth, Hollingsworth passed away this past week as well. Uh, also, we need to keep the family of Don Neal, who is a rel relative of Dana Neal's, um, in our prayer prayers, I should say. Um, uh, Mr. Neal was laid to rest on Saturday, uh, so we uh, definitely need to keep the Neal family in our prayers. Um, we need to keep um, Dominic Munn in our prayers. Uh, Dominic uh, got a diagnosis that he has a small um, hole in his heart, nothing too serious. Um, and he also has a very um, increased heart rate. So they're going to give him some medications to take care of that heart rate, uh, slow it down a little bit, and uh, explore further treatment options. Uh, we want to continue to keep Adam Vick uh, in our prayers after his uh, soldier shoulder surgery. Um, I need, we need to keep Brad Von Tunglin in our prayers uh, for... Uh, for relief from his medical issues. Uh, we want to continue to keep Kara and Kyle Taylor, uh, Mr. Thomas Porter, and uh, Ms. Linda Minyard in our prayers as well. Um, we also would like to, um, we have a couple of joys. Um, both I actually mentioned during our announcement period. Uh, one, Dominic Munn uh, placed a blessings box 
filled with uh, books and uh, non-perishable food items uh, at the Grady Fire Department. Um, when he put it out uh, about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, um, it was very full of food and books. Um, I've been told that it is um, empty now. So he is asking for help on restocking that blessings box. Uh, if you're interested, uh, feel free to contact the church through social media or uh, contact um, Jessica Munn. Uh, she will, uh, they are gladly taking donations for that blessings box. Uh, and last but not least, um, we also uh, continue to um, thank the Lord for the blessing of, of Jamie Varnell and her new son. Um, mom and baby are doing very well. Uh, they got to go home from the hospital on Saturday, and uh, she put up some uh, pictures of their homecoming on Facebook that I got to see, and everybody looks like they're doing really, really well. So please continue to keep um, Jamie and her family in your prayers um, as they uh, step into a new uh, period of their life. Um, let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. Please keep the families of Miss Mary Kentz, Miss Ann Hollingsworth, and Mr. Don Neal in your caring. Please give them the comfort and knowledge that the, those people are with you in heaven and that they no longer suffer and want for nothing else. Uh, please continue to care for Dominic Munn, uh, Brad Von Tunglin, and Adam Vick as they all continue to deal with medical issues. Uh, please continue to be with Linda Minyard, Kara and Kyle Taylor, and, and Mr. Thomas Porter um, as they, uh, we have been asked to pray for those people as well. Uh, please, we thank you for the blessings that, uh, that are Dominic Munn's blessings box. Uh, we also thank you for the blessings of uh, Jamie Varnell and her uh, newborn son. Give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace, to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit. Taking today's message with you, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.